everybody and welcome to today's video. Today what we're going to do is something that should be pretty simple but inevitably never usually is. Uh, we're going to change the badges on the Type R. Now I've got two new badges. I've got this one for the rear which is actually a non non genuine one but at least the size is correct and it all looks okay it looks a lot better than this horrible manky one anyway which i'll show you a close up in a second i'm very grateful because this one was gifted to me by a subscriber a long time ago and i've kept it ever since for something like this um, and then luckily last christmas um, i got off my mum the front one but the front one is a genuine one so they're like 60 odd quid so you know it's going to be 100 percent perfect and another thing as well, if you didn't already know, um, the front and the rear badges on these are the exact same size, same badge, everything. This looks like a really good copy. I'll show you the minor, minor differences before I start. But sometimes there is there is points where you go put it on and it's not the right shape, size, whatever. So be careful if you're buying a, a non-genuine badge. So then badge-wise, packaging, this is, this is the fake one here and this is the genuine one. The main thing with the genuine one that you'll notice is that it comes with these little extra tiny tiny washers that, that kind of clamp on the other side on the uh, little nibs that come through which we'll show you when we install them. But other than that the writing is very very similar just the barcode's a bit of a different shape and it's a bit of a different font but there is one of these I forgot what they call like a tag that you can scan uh, there on the genuine one and there isn't one on this one so that's another point. Taking them out of the packaging they still look extremely similar. The only difference is, because this is the genuine one still, is that there's slight, like a clear rim where the plastic finishes around here. Whereas on the genuine one, the plastic goes all the way to the edge of the chrome on the outside. There's not there's not like a see-through bit. Depth, there are, they're both really similar. On the back, it just comes with this cardboard on the genuine one. This has got these two nib covers and it's got 3M. Take this off. It still has the two nibs, but this is like Honda's own adhesive that comes on there, not the 3M. So, luckily though, these are very, very similar. I couldn't tell you where the fake ones come from, because like I said, it was gifted to me. So, um, I don't know where to buy that exact one. But, I got this one through Cox Motor Parts, I believe. They do loads of genuine Honda parts. Uh, really reliable source, if you did want one of those. So this is the rear one. You can see, looking from down below, how dirty and grotty it is. All the all the chromes flaked away around the, the, around the edges um, and at the top as well. So yeah, let's get a nice fresh one on there. There are some stress, stress marks on the actual, um, I forgot what it's called. The centre portion, we'll call it for now. I know what it's called, just forgot today. <laughs> As you can see there but what that is that's another little tip for you if you want it before i adjusted my boot latch this was really really difficult to close uh, it's actually latch shut and when you're obviously like slamming the boot down you're putting a lot of pressure on where the badge is because that's where the handle is to normally open it so you kind of close it in the same place it's because you don't want to touch all the paint and put loads of finger marks in the paint what i do now is actually press where the number plate is so you're not causing any stress and pressure on that center section where that is and adding loads of extra flex that doesn't need to be there so i just push nice, nicely on this part now and uh, that can avoid you getting any extra stress marks if you don't want any yourself so when it comes to taking these off the one thing i've mainly heard to use is dental floss which we've got a little bit of that here um, I don't think it's brand specific use whatever bloody floss you want really cut a bit off don't want to use it all because i still use this kind of regularly and uh, let's just see how far we get. I should have got a, a longer piece, but we'll see. I might need something to kind of stuff it into the corner first before we set off. Try this instead. There we go. Right, I've gone all the way around with the floss now until the floss snaps, pretty much. So. I've got to be really careful because I don't want to put any extra stress marks. I don't have any like trim remover tools, but I need to somehow edge this away. At the end of the day, if this badge gets any more damage, which it probably will because I've just seen it lifting away from the logo, um, it doesn't matter too much because we're replacing it. So it's more a, a, a fact of getting it off without damaging the rest of the car. That's the main thing. So I'm just going to do some lifting all the way around so that it comes away evenly. That 
all the chrome inside it is just disintegrating. Like all these stress marks, I could use like one of those vinyl cover-ups, which I did get one. I did get one. And um, I stretched it around here whilst I were installing it, so I had to bin it. Waste of time. Um, I should get another one another day and, and try again, really. Okay, so that's it now off. Um, that's for the bin now, forget about that. This is just like the rest of the adhesive that you could probably leave on and stick the other one on top, but it might not sit correctly, it might sit lifted, um, and it might not attach as strongly as it needs to. So I'm going to concentrate on getting the rest of this off first. Might try peeling it a little bit and see how far we get. And then when it's all cleared up, we can concentrate on sticking the new one on. Exciting! Well then, this was extremely, extremely tedious, but fingers crossed it'll be worth it when it comes to sticking the other one on. That's something I've noticed that's strange. These are the two um, indents here for the nibs to go in from the batch. But if you look behind, there's like two extra nib holes there and there. My reckoning is, when this is on the non-Type R model, this whole um, plastic piece here is flush. Come over, I'll show you what I mean. Like this, it's flush because the badge is actually on the inside of the of the perspex. So I'm guessing the nibs on the other one are the nibs that they'd use to put this kind of badge in. So they must use the same clear plastic behind this that they use in the Type R as well. But then they just change the colour of the plastic behind that to either have grey or have red. That's what I'm guessing anyway. Right, so I've cleaned all this out. Uh, I didn't use any like quick detail or anything because that tends to have a kind of like a water resistant property. So it, it makes your paintwork hydrophobic. Yeah, so I just used the normal like spray kitchen cleaner. Only a couple of dabs and one piece of tish tissue. It's in one piece of tissue because you know how times are. I'm just gonna do a little test fit to make sure they all look all right in that area. Why won't it go in? Ah, so, the nibs are too long, which means that they're going to need a bit of a snip. I'll cut those down a few mil and uh, come back to you. Right, so I've cut those down a bit. They fit nicely in the slots now, which means that I can stick it down as well. So we'll peel off this tape. God, that really grips, so just make sure that you bang on when you, uh, when you do that. Get a bit of pressure, obviously not too much pressure because pressure, we don't want any more stress mark. Now for a fake, I think that looks pretty bang on that. Loads better. So I took this top panel off here, mainly so I could have a feel behind, see whether the nibs came through and if it needed those tiny washers that came with the genuine one. Because it's a fiberglass Mugen rep, I couldn't feel any at all. So we'll just use the floss again. Be very, very careful this time because we don't want to damage any of the paint on the grill. And then look at what there is left behind and maybe we'll just be able to just stick it on with the adhesive and that's that. Now this is like the disgust of this badge. Loads of stress marks, loads of like cracks and things. This is mainly because it was on the original Type R grill that was on this car. Uh, I actually sold that grill shout out to Dale and I forgot to take it off and he let me have it back so this is a genuine one but like we said it's in really rough condition so this I've literally just put the floss behind it for two seconds and it's already coming about across here I've got a feeling only a couple of the adhesive pads actually worked so this should be a really easy yeah I, I hardly flossed it I did do it a little bit before but that's literally all I've done yeah I had to use number plate pads as you can see kind of lucky how long that lasted to be fair so I'll clean this in the same way again, and we'll get the new one back on. Although I can see through there, so I might be able to use them washers after all. Your best bet for accuracy is to probably take this whole bumper off, so you can do it. Um, but I'm going to try and fathom it by just reaching down. Right, so I've cleaned all this up, ready to go. There's just a tiny bit of residue left from the previous one, but it's nothing too dangerous. What I've also managed is because this newer grill is mounted to the bumper, not to these mounting points here, you can see them 
that's the old grill mounting point. I can pull this bumper away, obviously without undoing them at either side, but you can pull them away from underneath the lights because they're just like fitting clips and pull the grill away a little bit as well. Now because it's giving me an extra like centimetre or two, I can now reach down here and feel perfectly where them holes are. So I can go down there with a little washer, fingers crossed, yeah, and put them on. So nice little full foolproof plan. Uh, we'll get the adhesive bit on and then uh, pop on the washers. How do I feel about being uh, a member of the Information Society? That's a difficult question because I didn't know we were in the Information Society. One thing I will say is the adhesive isn't as thick as on the fake one, so you've got to get it bang on to fit in. Because when them washers are definitely going to come into play. Sticking it all. So then, that's it all done and dusted. I managed to get the two washers in. Uh, they have really helped on keeping it in place. Um, it, it, has, it came down to basically where one side was going to get pressure on the adhesive and the other side wasn't because it wasn't fitting perfectly in this gap. Last thing I want to do is start trimming the badge down because it's going to look horrific. So only when you get up really, really close you can tell, but it kind of sticks out slightly more on this side than that side because that side's gone all the way in, adhesive's attached. So I had my hands on the inside pushing the fiberglass into the badge as well. That was obviously the first bit that got attached to it and then this has come out a bit. I've tried pushing it in. This is just how it's going to have to be. It's loads better than the one before, that's what we've got to think. There's still some kind of like swirl marks on it, but we get a little bit of a polish as well, a bit of a hand polish, and um, that should kind of buff all that out for us. But other than that, I'm loads more happier with it. Loads more happier. I am loads happier, let's speak correctly. The grill's still fine, no damage to the grill. There is a gap in there, I know you can't see it, but that's to do with the bumper, nothing I can do about that. Um, and then next we need to just sort the bonnet out and the wing, give them a little bit of polish. Uh, a bit of touch up here and there, where well, there's a bit of paint missing, but we'll do that first before we do any polishing, let that dry. But yeah, that's definitely another thing off the list. Plus, look how shiny it is. They've got Honda trousers and everything. Oh. Hey, little cats and kittens. Carol Baskin here. Do you know, I must have said her name more than I've said my own wife's name in the past week or so. Carol Baskin! <laughs> to be honest, I've been watching more Tiger King than I have been doing anything anything on the car at all in the past week and a half. I think that's this is the first thing I've done. Something about not being able to go anywhere or see anybody, just it could put you in a bad place, definitely. And I've had to like proper like, come on, like, gym yourself up. Otherwise you just eat, drink, go to bed, wake up again, have a lie in. It's just a cycle. I think it's been three weeks and two days since I started. Well, the two weeks was normal quarantine from symptoms that Francesca had, and then an extra week started with the new vulnerable person quarantine. So technically like one week down, 11 more to go, really. But we're gonna keep busy, we're gonna keep high, we're gonna keep trying to get stuff on for you guys to watch. Me and my mate James I had a quick go at trying to do some kind of live streaming when we played um, COD Warzone the other night. Um, it took us a while to get it properly working, working out why we couldn't hear his voice, why our voices were too low, that kind of thing. But yeah, we kind of understand how it works now and um, if you didn't see, I did a little bit of a poll on what games people might want to see first and Call of Duty did win, even though it's not the least enjoyable but it's still, I don't play on it on my own kind of thing. I only play on Warzone because it's free and I can play with a friend so, um, but yeah, it is, it can be a laugh which I hope you guys that were watching did find it a bit of a laugh. And I'm going to try and do some more in between doing car videos just so you've got something to watch. Maybe some dirt rally or some, um, there's a flying here I swear to god. Spyro the Dragon, Uncharted even, maybe you have a go at that. But either way, I hope you found this video at least a bit entertaining and slightly useful. If you're going to change your badges and if you think it's worth changing the badge, worth getting a genuine one or worth getting um, a replica one, the replica I had, like I said, is really, really good. Um, but some people aren't that lucky. Another channel, a good friend of mine, um, Spare Time Network, he ended up with some badges that were too small, pretty much. Um, they were like halfway between EP3 size and FN2 size, they were just ridiculous. So yeah, just be very, very careful. Bit of gutter, the genuine one doesn't fit properly in, but that's more the grill's fault than the badge. 
Uh, I should have really just put some extra adhesive behind it and plinked it out a little bit so it's even, but I've had a bad rep. I've got like a, a reputation for panicking and just finishing a job before I can rectify a problem, so that is how it is now. I might carefully remove it and do it at some point, but for now, with the two washers, it's, it's all in place. So until next time, guys, stay safe, look after each other, don't go near each other. I'll be having to, having to go to the hospital next week to go and have an infusion, so I'm gonna be keeping my distance like well back. And I might take you for the drive there, why not? Cause when else am I gonna to get to drive? And as well as thinking about all those amazing people that are still out there looking after us, getting jobs done, um, small jobs, big jobs, they're all, they're all necessities that need doing. Also think about the companies that have been running that have just keep being, well, companies like PBS or um, just modifying, detailing, companies in general that help us keep our passion for cars alive because they're obviously still trying to keep their wheels turning whilst ours aren't and sat on the drive so let's show them some support especially when we get out of this and thrive again and get back out to the car scene that the, the one that it used to be the one where everybody's back together and full of individuality and customization and just it'll come the day will come Thank you again for watching guys, if you did enjoy this video click like and subscribe to the channel so it reminds you when a fresh video comes on. In fact you've done with that by subscribing now, you'll click that little bell, so click the little bell, the little bell, so it reminds you when a fresh video does come on. And until next time guys, like I always say, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.